share what is your protocol to, to, for your health span? I mean, given the fact that I'm 145 and I hardly look it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, so, um, so I told you what you need to do in order to keep your burden of senescent cells down and keep your health span up. So good diet, um, moderate exercise. So I do do that. I, I mean, I, I'm part Italian, so I, I love a Mediterranean diet. I live on that. Um, I, you know, I never exercise as much as I should, but I do do moderate exercise. Um, I'm terrible at sleep. I don't know what to say about that. But the most important thing, choose your grandparents carefully. Right. There That's... is a genetic component to longevity. And, you know, I come, so I'm half Polish and half Italian, but both sides of my family, both my grand, sets of my grandparents uh, tended to be long lived, especially for the time. So I think I'm just lucky. And the other thing I will say, which is a little bit heretical, but um, I think having a lifestyle that has some stress in it is good for you. Now, I'm not talking about trying to get your family on a boat in the Mediterranean. That's extreme stress and that's, that's bad. But, you know, I'm constantly worrying about deadlines and funding and did this experiment. This low level stress that comes from having a very active life, I, I, I think it actually helps keep you young. Can you talk a little bit about what's uh, your lab at the moment? What, what, is your current, what are you currently researching? What, what are the most exciting things that you're looking at? So one thing we're looking at now is trying to understand how um, certain tissues communicate with other tissues within the aged organism. And one of the tissues we're focusing on is the blood supply. So if you think about it, every tissue in your body has to be exposed to some blood, right? This is how it gets nutrients and growth factors and whatever. But there are different types of cells that make up the blood supply. For example, in the lung, there are these tiny little blood vessels that um, enable your, your lung cells to absorb oxygen and release it. Whereas in the big, like your heart and you know, the, the major vessels, um, they have to deliver lots of blood to lots of tissues. And so we're now trying to parse this out. The, the cells in the small vessels, the cells in the large vessels, how do they become senescent? Are they, how are they different? They are different. How do they become senescent? Are senescent cells bad or good in both cases? Are there good and bad ones in both cases? So it's really now trying to look more holistically at the organism and trying to understand how different parts of the body communicate with each other. How is it that if you have certain defects in your gut, your brain functions differently? We know that, right? Mm. We know that the microbiota, for example, can affect how your brain functions. And the question is, is it always due to senescence? I have actually, I tell my lab all the time, maybe not everything that happens with age is due to senescence, but we still need to answer these questions about aging. How is it that we age really as total organisms? It's very rare to find a, an old elderly person where only one tissue has aged. Usually it's multiple tissues, and we think that's not an accident. We think it's because tissues do communicate with each other. And we need to understand that better. And then why in a mouse is it all over in three years? And in a human, it takes 100 years. We don't know. So what I, we, are, we are trying to understand that mechanistically, as well as from an evolutionary perspective. Right. The, uh, but senescent cells in one area, if you have a senescent cell in one area, then it tends to spread to other areas. Um, yes. So yes. Yeah. That's called the bystander effect. Hmm. Um, and so we're definitely working on that. So you have one senescent cell, the surrounding cells will have, will acquire senescent characteristics. But what is interesting, if you take one of those bystander senescent cells and ask whether it communicates senescence to its neighbors, for the most part, it does not. 
Now think about it. That makes sense. Otherwise, as soon as you got your first senescent cell, your whole body would be filled with senescent cells if it was infinite spreading. So it's not infinite spreading. And this is something we're working on is understanding what controls the spreading and what's different about those bystander cells from the primary cells. So yes, so this is what happens. Yeah, when you look in a tissue and you look to see where are senescent cells, it's not uncommon to see them in small clusters, suggesting that one guy became senescent and then spread mm -hmm. to the other cells. But it's not everywhere. Like I said, they're always at a minority. There's never huge numbers of senescent cells ever. Right. So they do spread, but, but there's some limit to their spreading. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And we're trying to understand that. But this is very exciting times for aging research. I think for the first time, um, we're not only beginning to understand aging more holistically, but we're also beginning to develop interventions that I am sure, even in our lifetime, will help our health span. Mm -hmm. You may not live for 500 years, but you may die like they're good marshal, you know, <laughs> at 110. Right. Yes. Yeah, no, that, that would be a good end. 